Recording in progress. All right. So welcome, everybody. Today is Sunday. It's a beautiful day to praise the Lord. And for those of you that are watching this after the fact, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 and a little bit about enduring persecution, which uh, which is something that some of us that if you, you know, if you take the risk of saying you are a Christian, and you uh, invite somebody to a meeting or just simply uh, talk about it, then you will find that uh, there are challenges uh, to that uh, uh, to that stance. So anyway, um, uh, if somebody left us because we're recording, remember that the recording is only on the the feature presentation. So for anybody that does join in, you're not being recorded. It's only the people that are on screen that are being recorded, and that's me right now. So if we open up, let's get going with Matthew 5. And if you ever went to Sunday school over the years, okay, so if you ever went to Sunday school over the years, then you've probably heard these. So basically in Matthew 5, uh, Jesus is, uh, as we say, the Sermon on the Mount, and other places, Sermon in the Valley, and etc. But this is a, classically the Sermon on the Mount, and really, really uh, one of the favorite scriptures that we like to, to come to. So in seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, uh, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And, you know, this, this is the thing about evangelism and outreaching just right off the bat that you, you might not know it all. You might be a little weak in your faith or otherwise. But, you know, the kingdom of heaven is reserved for you uh, if you come along and you, and you uh, seek the Lord. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And a key thing is you, you right now you can think that along the way, Something has happened to you. Each and every one of you, me included, has a story of loss, of sacrifice, maybe, or of somebody being taken maybe prematurely, or a hurt, or a, a broken relationship, or an abandonment. And you might feel very sorrowful for that. But this is what Jesus is saying, is that if you are mourning, you will be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And, you know, a meekness is, uh, as we have said, uh, is often the, the training of a horse, is that you are able and disciplined and humble enough to know that when the master's reins are upon you and the bridle is upon you, that you are going to follow those and you are going to be doing great and wonderful things. So take the yoke of Jesus upon you and allow him to be your guide and you will truly inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's something we all want. Some people, unfortunately, uh, will take that in a wrong direction or out of their own ideas and thoughts. But when it's directed by God, righteousness is something that will fill us all. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And remember that mercy is greater than and better than judgment. And blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And what a wonderful comfort that is, is that as, and how do we get pure of heart? Well, by the washing and regeneration and the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 5. So blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. I did a, a talk on this recently on one of my podcasts where peace isn't that wonderful, glowing, fuzzy uh, peace uh, or the absence of war, but it's certainly a, a peace of mind, knowing that God has everything in control, and that as long as we are are disciplined and being built up in the in the Word and in the Spirit, that we are going to see some amazing things happen in our lives, and we are going to be partakers in bringing about an ultimate peace. Bless, and now we're getting into the crux of it in 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted 
for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, you, you just take a look at the early apostles and, and the early members of the church. And, and I think it's one of those things that in North America, Australia, and around the world, we've had a pretty good run of it. As I've been saying, we talked about this on the pastor's meeting, where for the longest time, saying you were a Christian would open doors. Saying you were a Christian meant you were part of the majority, the cool club. But now what we are starting to see is that that's becoming more and more the minority. And so now we are faced with a with a bit of a challenge is that if we go out and we preach the gospel and maybe we go and we do something in a foreign country or just down the road in Victoria or uh, on the streets of Seattle, I see uh, some crazy things going on in, in and around the Seattle area, then, you know, you might be persecuted, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, verse 11 is a key one. And, and, and certainly we'll bring it down with these final two verses and then Anthony can, can change the camera view. So blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so part for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now, you know, just a little bit of light and fuzzy, you get a little bit of everything there. And certainly if we take all of those, it's just like we could go through the fruits of the spirit, the, the armor of God, and we can take a look at the Beatitudes and we can break each one down and see how that applies to our life and get some encouragement from it. And today's a little bit about persecution. We had the, the international pastors meeting and we saw some uh, pastors that were talking about some of the things that are going on in Australia and, and in different places and some of the challenges that people are faced with with preaching the gospel. And it was sort of listening to, uh, you know, Rockhampton and Sunshine Coast and, and, and up through Queensland, where one of the pastors said, you know, if, if our young people go out and they witness right now, just, hey, come unto the Lord, healing signs, wonders, miracles, they are being vilified, like people are coming after them in droves with, uh, with knives out almost to, uh, to come after them and to make false accusations. You're saying this about this group. You're saying that about that group. You have this against them. And, and it's like, no, we are here to talk about love. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that's encouragement. And when you look at that, when you look at that, and you look at the words of Jesus, where he said, unless you are born again of water and of the spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. That is what he says. That is what we believe. When he says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Hallelujah. That's good. We've got a blueprint. We have the GPS that says, this is the direction. I program it in on my phone. Type it in, heaven. And it says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive, no, sorry, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. His promises unto you, unto your children, and to as many as are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. We should be thankful that somebody gave us the GPS coordinates. It's like you're going along the highway, and Google Maps says the bridge is out. That means if you keep driving, do, 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 rerouting, the bridge is out ahead. The bridge is out. Oh no, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I got an idea. We've got two choices in that point when the bridge is out. We either keep going and we go off the cliff to a certain death, or we reroute and we follow the way the Lord has planned for us. And if people persecute us for standing up and saying, hey, this is the way, this is the way, the truth, and the life. 
Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing it is. And what a joyful thing it is. And some people are grateful, you know, and, you know, about the persecution and other things out there is quite amazing when I just pause and reflect on it, because the other day, and I was telling uh, some of you about this was I, I have a podcast that I do daily, uh, you know, click a like, subscribe to the channel, get it on Facebook uh, or on our YouTube channel, the Victoria Revival Fellowship. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so that you get notified when new videos come. There you go. That's my little plug for the, the podcast. But I thought the other day I posted a link and said, all right, I'm going to post uh, a link of the YouTube video on Facebook. And then something popped up and it said, hey, why don't you boost this post? And I thought, you know, I haven't done that in a while. So maybe I'll hit the boost the post. And the boost the post basically creates a Facebook ad. And OK, well, that's going to cost some money, but uh, that's all right. We're not having to pay money to rent a hall. But, and, you know, and some people have, uh, you know, through their tithes and offerings, we, we have a little bit of money in the bank account. So let's just try it and see what happens. So I hit the boost the post. And I think, you know, for anybody that's keeping the books at home, it, it, you know, so far we're about $16 on this little outreach boost the post <laughs> effort. But it, it was amazing what happened. The post went out. And so now instead of 60 or 100 people, I'm up to about 1,200 people have seen the post. And instead of two likes on the post, we've got 44 likes on the post. Some people laugh because, of course, at the end of my podcast, sometimes I put a joke and some people like my jokes and wonder what happened to the two guys that uh, disappeared and the guy in the boat that was lonely and he wanted his friends back. Uh, you know, they no, they forget everything else about the, but no. So some people click the like, some people put a, a tear there, but then the hatred comments came in and I was, uh, I guess I should have been expecting it, but it was like die pawn scum, get off Facebook. You spammer. It's not 1600. It's 2021. There is no God. So these were some of the comments. And then, uh, you know, of course there was even, uh, somebody that professed to be a Christian that wanted to correct us on our doctrine and, and, uh, you know, ask pharmaceutical questions. And so, you know, I've had to delete all the comments, but it was just quite amazing that, and I went, wow, did I say something terribly controversial in the podcast? I kind of went back and it was all about, you know, Hey, here's some ways to, to better yourself. And, uh, you know, if you're going through a tough time, uh, then here's some answers that might work for you. Uh, come to the Lord, the word of God. And uh, maybe I said some history or fun facts. My, my jokes weren't, weren't all that offensive. And so, you know, you kind of go back through there. But these are people that as soon as you say, hey, instead of going to uh, the doctors or going to the psychiatrist because you're depressed, and you now want to go to the psychiatrist and spend $100 an hour sitting down for them to analyze you, uh, why not come to the Lord, the Word of God, which His medicine is to remind us that through a joyful heart, it doeth good like a medicine. It releases the, the, the endorphins, the, all the different things that, that make us feel good, the fellowship brothers and sisters together the vision and the hope that says that okay our team wins our team wins we go up there's the pathway to salvation so all of these things now become quite controversial and as you know any of the controversial issues that uh, the social issues and the other things Look, I, I want to encourage people to read the Word of God. If people have discussion points on technical little things and they want to learn, hey, listen, we can go through, we can study it, and we can show ourselves approved on all of these little minutiae that might be there. But the big thing is to realize the hope that God has for us. So we go into Matthew 6. 14, and this is something that is, is such a key. 
uh, you know, after, you know, forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But, you know, we often will say, forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So people will persecute you. People will say evil against you. People will do that. But we really need to rise above it and just feel the love in our hearts. And verse 15 is a real powerful point, is that if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So that is the, the act of, I, I guess, releasing the burdens. So I said, everybody's got a story. Somebody's done something to you. Or maybe something happened. Or maybe the Lord said, all right, you know, I'm going to take this person from you early. Or that relationship didn't work out. Or that job, um, you know, you had a problem. Or the boss was... Uh, was just having a bad day and took it out on you. Whatever it is, whatever challenge it is, and whatever happened, if we carry that burden with us, hang on to it. You are putting bricks into your backpack and carrying it around. So let it go. Let it down and forgive. And yeah, when people are persecuting you and you're out there, hey, listen, all I'm trying to do is talk about lifting people up and encouraging them. If people don't like what they see on the TV, turn the channel. You don't like the ad that you saw on Facebook, turn the channel. Block me if you like. And then guess what? You won't see anything from me again. And that's your choice to do that. But to have the, oh, you're a Christian, we're going to come against you. And, you know, there are militant groups out there that are sitting around in basements that are really, and, and I've said this before, you'll know them by your fruits. What do we want to do? We want love, joy, peace, patience. We've talked about that, had a good podcast on that, on today's podcast. And so, you know, joy, temperance, all the rest of it. I, I lost my place in it, but the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. So uh, we want to talk about that. That's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about uh, developing those things. And so we will know them by their fruits. And yeah, not everybody that comes along becomes a Christian, gets baptized in the Spirit filled automatically is, hey, I'm a wonderful, loving kind, fruitful, generous person that just forgives unconditionally. Some of us, you know, we got a little overcoming. Yeah, absolutely. There have been testimonies of people that uh, right in the baptismal tank, they get miraculously delivered from so many things and they go on to a victorious life. Other people, all right, well, we got baby Christians that maybe need a little bit of work and they, you know, hopefully they'll get the vision. And the one thing that brothers and pastors have taught me from my early days in the church, you get a person reading the word of God, you get a person praying in the spirit and things work out. We remember young Anthony, he gave his testimony at the convention. What a great testimony. Remember when he came along? How many people, were, I guess I'm the only one here that can remember you when you first came along. You met Bobby in 2005, and that was sort of four years later. So Bobby never got to see your, your Jackson 5 hairdo or the uh, Mr. T starter kit that you wore. And, uh, but, um, you know, uh, Anthony was just a kid from the wrong side of the tracks who was spirit-filled already. And we just saw the Lord transform him and quite quickly. And yeah, he had a little bump on the road and, uh, and needed some help. And I just said, Lord, I'm just a young pastor. I don't have the resources here. You're going to have to take them. And so Anthony went away for six months and came back a better man, haircut, clean shaven, 
and ready to serve the Lord with a good vision and a good zeal. And, and all we did after that was, I remember there were, you know, nights that, all right, let's go Monday night. Let's get in the car and let's drive around Victoria and we'll just pray in the spirit. And we, it was almost like we had that idea that we were going to go around Victoria uh, six times. And then on the, we never did the seventh day where we drove around Victoria seven times, but we were going to drive around Victoria. And we were just going to, it didn't take us very long, pray in the spirit for 10 minutes. You can pretty well do a lap of Victoria. And, and that's what we did was we got together, Anthony and I, and we would drive around Victoria and we would pray in the spirit for salvation and revival. And, and actually as a result, you know, we ended up having 75 baptisms, people healed of uh, conjunctivitis, HIV, uh, broken fingers, uh, amazing provision and guidance. And Anthony, of course, as a result, went from this guy will never get a job. He's got no skills to, all right, we got a job for you. Okay. All right. Let's do a resume. We got another better job for you working at the hospital. All right. Uh, you seem to be doing well in that. Let's get you a better, better job. Uh, but we've got you in a box. So you just say no, and we won't get that job for you. But uh, because as John knows, you've got union rules. And so we have to offer it to you. And he, no, 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 hang on, hang on. I think I can do it. And he did it. He overcame OCD and praise the Lord. That's what we want to talk about. What is so wrong with that? He doesn't need to sit down with psychologists three times a week or anybody else who went through the same program he went through. Where are they, Anthony? Dead or on the streets or living in their home shooting up opioids? Anthony is here. Why? Because he got spirit filled. And so what does the government say? Hey, I got a great idea. Let's give everybody safe drug supply. Safe drug supply. That's what's coming. What a sad world we are in that we have a record number of people that have given up hope on life, that they have decided that they don't care. They're going to stick the needle in. And if it happens to have too much fentanyl, oh, well, they OD. And so now the government and compassionately, if it's a health crisis, you know, you, you want to do something. And so they're going to make sure they get a safe supply. But if people would come unto the Lord, if people would be baptized, if people will receive his Holy Spirit, come unto me, all you that are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. And if we get persecuted for that, bring it on. Because it's got to make people realize that we are stronger together. You know, we are stronger together. All right, Revelation 2. We can't get bitter. We got to keep focused on things, as I say. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Absolutely. You know, we hate those people that are evil. We want them to repent. We don't need Sodom and Gomorrah all over the place or worldwide, you know, postmodernism and all the rest of it. And you, you've tried them which are apostles and are not and found them liars and has borne. And has patience, that long suffering hanging in there. For my name's sake has labored and not fainted. Well done. You should be you know, held up as somebody that has done that. Now, if we swing the pendulum that way to look, we hate that. We don't like this. The Bible says this and repent, you sinner. You know, it's. Kelly's pet peeve is going to the football game and having the people on the street corner with the loudspeakers going, repent you sinners. Yeah, you know, if there was somewhere in between, you know, maybe we could, you know, step up our game a little bit, but maybe not be quite that extreme. Nevertheless, verse four, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. And we we, we know that he that overcomes will inherit all things and all of that stuff written in Revelation. But we cannot forget our first love. 
which is the day we received the Holy Spirit, the day we went under the waters of baptism, the day we knew that the Lord had entered our hearts, bursting out in that new language that God gave us to pray to him intimately. Wow. The day we saw somebody else baptized and received the Holy Spirit, the day we laid hands on somebody, saw them healed, the, way, the day we saw the victory in Jesus, then somehow miraculously, Ziba is sitting here in our house. She should be in Turkey. She should be in Iran, but she's here. Hallelujah. We're happy. That's exciting. God helped. God helped. Brought her here. Praise the Lord. That's victory in Jesus. And those are the things that we need to, to, to keep remembering is our first love. Now, along the way, you know, we got our, our challenge here. And, and of course, um, uh, you know, just listening to some of the people and, and at the, at the camps and at the conventions, it's really encouraging to hear how the gospel is going out now. And we got John Situ here, who's our, our educational person on all things, uh, communist China and, and all the problems of preaching the gospel there. But we had our pastor, uh, in China. Uh, well, I guess he's not technically a pastor because if they gave him that name, they would take him away and arrest him so he's just a brother in the lord uh, but we are seeing baptisms in china we are seeing people receive the holy spirit hallelujah how exciting that is and i got and i wish john was here because i had some uh, chinese uh, people on one of the breakout rooms and they were really trying to speak english because uh, as john knows a lot of people in china know how to speak English, maybe not perfect, but they do know how. And so this girl was telling me, oh, yeah, no problem. We can get together and have meetings. And it was like, huh, what? So you're not worried that the Chinese communist government is watching your phone right now and knows that you are on, oh, no, we're, we're getting together. And it's like the Lord has done that. But at any moment, there could be, you know, a movement or a persecution. And as we say, in certain countries, they have it a little more risky than us. Right, Ziba? How would I do if I went to Iran and started preaching Jesus in Iran? Be, you know, I, it, it could be a little scary, particularly if I, you know, or Pakistan. We have the, um, uh, the people in, in Pakistan that are preaching the gospel there. That could be a little, you know, risky. And, uh, you know, it's good to get updates like that. We saw the, the update from India as well about how the gospel is going there. And, uh, you know, and we saw Shujana's sister uh, there, Ashwini, in the, in the group photo from, uh, from India. It's wonderful. She comes on our Wednesday night meetings. And how encouraging that is. Uh, but in Luke's 9.24, this is the point that we have to understand. And I talked about the persecution. We're going to get together. We're going to stick together. We're going to all be all right. The Lord's going to fight our battles. But in North America and around the world, we've had a good run at it. And if you get vilified, welcome to the club, as Jesus would say. He suffered the ultimate price. 9.24 says, for whoever will save his life, life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it that's key if you want to live forever you got to lose your life you want to see fruit you got to plant the seed in the ground and it dies and if you take care of that soil through fertilization it's going to bear fruit Fertilization is the fellowship. Fertilization is the love of God, the watering. God will bring forth the nutrients out of the ground, and that seed will bear fruit. And you, if your soil is good soil, you is your body, then that seed is going to go in. But, um, yeah, if you're trying to save your life, you want lots of friends, you want to be popular, <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Leave now. 
go out there, hang out with people that will like you more. And if we try and, you know, like I said, we're going to follow the, the, the word of God. It's going to be as loving and encouraging. We'll work on our music, try and get the presentation a little bit better, work on our video, maybe, you know, try and spice things up a little bit. So it's a, it's a little better in our program. We're not against that. But on the other hand, if you want to be popular, going to church is, is probably, I, I, I don't recommend it. If, if that's your goal. And guess what? You'll save your life, but you'll lose it. That's the contradiction, right? You go out there, eat, drink, and be merry. And, you know, maybe you want to, <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day who's on the, there, I don't recommend, I don't watch a lot of Simpsons, but there was this one episode in the Simpsons where Homer Simpson said, you know, well, if I'm wrong, I'll repent on my deathbed. And I thought, <laughs> You know, that was sort of, they're all going to church and, and uh, there's a lot of people out there that, hey, I got an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go eat, drink, and be merry, and I'm going to time it just right so when that diagnosis of terminal illness comes in, if I can just come up to the edge, then I can maximize the worldly fun, and then the last minute, you know, pull a thief on the cross. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And all the angels in heaven and everything. What a pathetic philosophy that is. You come to the Lord. You come to him now. And, uh, you know, don't plug your ears and go, la, 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 not listening. That doesn't work either. The word is there. And in the end, you'll be without excuse. So if you want to be popular, Hey, go out there and, and make friends with the world and enjoy your life. It'll be a good one. And we wish you all the best. And somebody will correct me on that. Say, no, no, pastor, the Bible says you shouldn't even wish them Godspeed. Well, you know, that's up to them. We don't want anybody harm. We hope that everybody comes to repentance. Everybody comes to the Lord. Everybody receives that blessing where they will be raised up on eagle's wings they will wait upon the Lord. They will see the breath of dawn. They will see him return. And they will see many miracle signs and wonder. And the deer will hit the car behind you. That's what we want to see in our life. And all the people said. Well, Luke 21, 12 says. Now, here's some more things. And remember, you, you after this, you've been warned. So you can run screaming after this and say, that's it. I don't want to be a part. Or you can understand that he that overcomes will inherit all things. And that's what it is. Put your treasure in heaven. Put your treasure in heaven. Luke 21, 12. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. We see that a lot over the course of history and even more now. Let's go to the next verse, Anthony. 16, and you shall be, this is a good one. Your enemies are going to be in your own home. Read that. Just read that. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you, they shall cause to be put to death. Facebook has a new policy coming out. It's interesting. Rat on your friend and say that they might become an extremist. There's a t-shirt out there in it, which is, uh, you know, if your kids have an aversion to drugs and sexual misbehavior, if they have a desire to procreate, if they want to do better and well in school, they might become a right-wing extremist. So report on them right now. There is help. Uh, wow. That's, it, it was a joke, right? But I thought that's kind of interesting. All right. Verse 17, Anthony. And you shall be hated of all men for my sake. Yep. Yeah. And there shall not be, but there shall not be, and because it's old English, they put it an heir because the H is silent, but a hair on your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. That's beautiful. You'll be thrown to the lions. You'll be burned at the stake. You'll be lit up like torches so that the street lights 
can light you up. That's already been done. Maybe that's not going to happen to us. Uh, like I said, the the thing that may happen is that they might uh, start relocation campaigns. Uh, you know, these things are being floated uh, around. Uh, you know, the there are people that think that the best way to unify the United States is to uh, uh, just you know, have nothing to do with or marginalize or forbid work for 74 million people. Uh, wow, that's that's a bit divided. And we just pray for that. We pray that that somehow, some way people are going to be able to eke out an existence. But just trust that God has got you protected. You know, the hairs on your head, that's fine. And be patient. Just keep rejoicing in the Lord. Now, hopefully that doesn't bring you down too much. But Isaiah 66, 5, we'll bring it home with a couple of scriptures here just to, to finish off, and then we'll turn it over to Bobby for communion. So Isaiah 66, 5 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, and your brethren that hated you. Those are the ones that betrayed you. I mean, just amazing. Family members turning in other family members. That has happened in history. Nazi Germany. Soviet Russia, communist China, Iran. We have experiences here where that has happened. That cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. And he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be the ones that are ashamed. That's a key verse. That's a key verse. But again, how do we rule? With love and forgiveness. Just have that whistle on your lips. Think of a happy song. Think of your the good things of the Lord, whatsoever things are, are honest, pure, of good report. All these things. And Romans 12, 20 says, this is how we deal with the enemies out there uh, of the world. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, and this is from, uh, this is one of the Proverbs. If your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, you shall heap coals of fire in his head. There's different things about whether that actually means comfort or whether you're, you're uh, uh, you know, really upsetting him by being nice to him. And that, that's the way that people will work is that. You know, you go to an enemy and you give him something to eat or drink. And wow, look at that. Why are they doing that? I have just persecuted them. I have just made sure that this happened or that happened. And by doing that, you're either going to win them over or they're going to be really, really upset. So verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil evil with good and i want to leave you on that thought i want to leave you on that thought that in the end as we have said bobby's repeated it anthony has repeated it our team wins the lord is coming back it is written everything that has happened has happened and along the way, we're going to have testimonies. We're going to have encouragement. We're going to have a lot of fun. And, you know, if we're forced into catacombs, forced into lockdowns, mask mandates, or, uh, you know, taken away to forced labor camps as they have in China, or thrown into uh, Iranian jails as, as they have, or maybe something happens and they will... Uh, martyr us whatever happens the lord is on our side he will not allow anything any weapon that's formed against us to prosper it can't no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper and so what we need to do is we need to understand that these things are coming and trying to be a little nicer and maybe a little more likable is not a bad goal, but in the end, we cannot sell out to what we know is true, which is the gospel message, the good news that Jesus died, he was raised again, and what love that was 
He told the disciples to go wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. That Peter, who had been afraid and denied that he knew Jesus, stood up and said, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That promise and that offering is there today. If you're listening to this on YouTube later, get in touch with your local revival fellowship. Send me a note on email. We'd be happy to pray with you, answer any of your questions later. Baptisms are available. Not after a six-month course, but when you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you may be baptized and what forbids water to those that want to achieve salvation today? So let that be your goal. Let that be mine. And let us rejoice together in the unity of the Holy Spirit. And all the people said.